So in today's web dev tip, we're going to take a quick look at how you can sort an array in JavaScript. So unsurprisingly, there is actually a built-in array function that will do this for us. And if we just call array.sort on the example array we've got on the page at the moment, you can see without even passing in any arguments, it will automatically sort that list of numbers which is really handy because we don't need to actually think about how the sorting algorithm works or anything. We can literally just call that sort function and it will do all of the hard work for us. Of course, this is in ascending order. So if we do want to get that in a descending order, one quick tip for you uh, is if you just reverse the array that comes back and you can see now everything is in a descending order. It's important to note that this array sort method is actually mutating the existing array. So if we just uh, log out array again at the bottom of our page here, you can see that it hasn't created a new array. It has actually gone in and moved those items in place in the existing array variable. So that's quite important. If you want to keep the original array untouched, you would need to make a copy of the array before you sort it. So what can you actually pass in as arguments to the sort function? Well, you might want to have a more complicated way of sorting the items in the array. Uh, just a simple set of numbers. There's not really much that can go wrong. We just need all the numbers in order, either ascending or descending. But what about if you've got an array of objects or something a bit more complex? You might want to provide a, your own sorting uh, function so that uh, the sort function knows what it needs to do in terms of ordering the items in the array. So what we pass into the sort function as an argument itself is another function as similar with other array methods and we basically get two arguments that are inside of this callback function and the first argument would represent one element and then the second argument would represent another element. And I've called them first and second here because what this sort function will do, it will go through each of the items in the array and compare the pairs of item in turn. And then depending on what you return from the sort function, it will either move them to the left or to the right uh, to put them into some kind of order. So to recreate what we had before in terms of the sorting and ascending for these numbers, we just need to subtract the second element value from the first element value. And I'll explain why this works in just a second, but just to show you what we had before, uh, if we just return uh, the first element uh, and the second element subtracted from that, you can see the array is sorted again, and we've basically recreated what we had without passing in any arguments before. So why do we subtract one element from another? Well, this is down to how the sorting function is expecting results to come back in terms of how it makes a decision as to where to move items. And basically, if the result that it gets back is lower than zero, so anything minus one or below, then what it will do is move the item that it's checking uh, to the left in terms of the position of the array. If we get a positive value, so plus one or any value higher than that, what we'll do is we'll move the item to the right uh, in the position of the array. And then if we get a zero, so if, for example, here, when we hit uh, this point here where we're comparing two and two, basically it just keeps the items in the same place. So keep the item in place. So that explains why we actually perform a sum and return one of these values back from the sort function. So if we take the first two items as an example, we're first of all going to subtract two from three, which will leave us with one. And what does JavaScript do with that? Well, it moves the item to the right. So when we're looking at the first item here, we're going to move three to the right position in the array. So hopefully that explains how the sorting function is expecting its return values. And a lot of people, when they're starting to use the sort function, maybe if you want to uh, sort your items in an ascending order, they might say, well, if I've got first element minus second element, all I need to do is add them together, perhaps. But of course, you can see there that doesn't work. And based off of these rules, you can see why that is. But if you do want to do something like that, you can obviously just move these parameters around. So we can say second element, uh, subtract the first element from that and we should get everything in a descending order now. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of the JavaScript sort function. As I say, if you get some more complex data, you can use these rules uh, in order to determine how the sort function will organize your items and move them about in the array. But that's it for this tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.